250 years ago. Tonight's event is the milestone of the Revolution 250 commemoration of the Sester Centennial, yes, that's Sester Centennial, of the American Revolution in New England. As this reenactment unfolds, 1870, and the town is tense. 18 months ago, the government in London sent four regiments of soldiers to Boston. Their mission was to protect officials collecting new taxes on tea and other goods. Those four regiments contained about 1,500 soldiers, sent to patrol a town of fewer than 16,000 people, most of them children. That meant there was one red coat for every two adult men in Boston. The arrival of those troops produced even more resentment and resistance than before. There were countless arguments between soldiers and civilians. People objected to stopping for army sentries. Sentry. Army oh. officers refused to obey the town watchmen. Women complained about being assailed on the streets. Soldiers reported being threatened with arrest just for doing their duty. Unfixed phone in the back. Company, show the R. R. Left about. Wheel. After two of those four regiments were moved to other parts of the empire, there were still fights in the marketplace, fights in the alleyways, and fights on the main road into town. The trouble affected even Boston's most affluent gentlemen of business. Ah. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Barrow. Uh, Mr. Barrow, Mr. Uh, Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne, good evening. Good evening. How is trade? It's as well as to be inspected. Uh, well, given the, the impositions of Parliament upon our trade. Ah, uh, why, I find it so odd that, that the merchants who complain continually about their trade in this town are also the ones who at the same time insist that not one ship bring in a single good from England and that no shopkeeper here sell them. Mr. Barrow, you know full well why we do not import why we have a non-importation agreement. It is to protect our liberties. Our oh, liberty, liberty. Some people appear to think that that term now means I won't pay my taxes. Sir, it does not mean any of that. It, you know it well. We will pay our taxes. We just like to have a voice in those taxes. We like to have our taxes levied by our legislators, such as the ones who meet here. You're here. If we are to submit, we will be no better than slaves. Incredible. Well, I must say that uh, having an army posted in our town certainly does not make me feel like a free, British citizen. Uh, look, I do not feel safe when these mobs attack our shops. Last fall, a sailor of the Customs Service was tarred and feathered. And, and look, look at this unsightly mob that's cl collected around us. I don't think it was that bad. Ah, bad? My God, do you not remember the mob that, that tore down the Lieutenant Governor's house in 1765? Yeah. <laughs> 
Certainly so. Only two years ago, the, the mob that burned Commissioner Harrison's boat in 1768. Yeah. I, I do not think it is these soldiers who are threatening to break my windows because I continue to sell goods from England. Perhaps not, sir. But having two regiments, 1,500 men posted in Boston, one man for every three adult men in this town, should be, have been known to the home government would cause problems. Now, Boston is a powder keg and the fuse is lit. It is our duty as British subjects to assist our government in paying off the debt from the last war. Do you not agree, sir? I wholeheartedly agree, but I believe it should be the work of our ministers, our legislators. Gentlemen, 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 we will not solve these issues this evening. Let us take our leave. Very well. Good evening, John. Good evening. The soldiers of His Majesty's 14th and 29th Regiments have lived in Boston for well over a year. Welcome or not, they have become part of the town population. Some work with uh, in shops and manufactories. Some have married in Boston's churches. Others brought their families with them, like Private Edward Montgomery of the 29th Regiment. His wife, Isabella, and their children have just bade good night to them, him as he reported for guard duty this evening. Town. Run along home, love. What did you mean by that remark? I just mean to say that we never asked the soldiers to come here. <laughs> and we never asked to be here. But my husband is a soldier of the crown, and he goes where he's ordered. It's not my fault that you can't keep the peace. Our town is doing very well until your lot arrived. <laughs> now it's nothing but brawls in the streets. <laughs> you women are just like the rest of Boston, too haughty and too proud. <sighs> I dare say, if another fight happens here tonight, several men's arses will be laid low by morning. Well, then I hope that your man is killed. <laughs> my husband will stand his guard against any of your boys. Over the past two weeks, the tension in, in Boston have grown even worse. In February, a riot outside the home of a hated customs official ended with him firing his gun into the crowd. His shot killed a boy no more than 11 years old. On March 2nd, a rope maker insulted a passing soldier by asking if he wanted work and then telling him to clean an outhouse. <laughs> that produced two full days of brawls between soldiers and rope makers. Today there were more fights outside the soldiers' barracks. But here, the center of town is still peaceful. Private Hugh White of the 29th Regiment stands guard at the customs office. The bright moonlight has brought out all sorts of people. <laughs> Two apprentices from Haymont's Barbershop have been enjoying a friendly visit with a couple of young women who look after the customs house. Look, it's Captain Goldfinch. He hasn't paid his barber's bill. You owe my master money. You hey. owe my master money. Hey, hey, you lad. He's a captain. He's an officer and a gentleman. <laughs> There's no. No gentleman in that regiment. Oh, you're a smart lad. Come close and show me your face. I'm not afraid to show my face to a oh. 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 Oh.
street. Oh, 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 More civilians have been wounded. A 17-year-old boy at the back of the crowd will die before dawn. A fifth man will die days later. How can peace be restored to Boston? Make way for the governor. Make way for the governor. Make way for the governor. Come on, come on. Captain Preston, there is your commander, sir. Governor, go spot. Governor, Governor. If the governor should order an inquest, 
as I suspect you will, you will all be called as witnesses to a grand jury. If this comes to Mark trial, well, you must tell the truth of what you saw here. That mob was ready to kill these soldiers. Mark well what you saw here tonight. Was it not murder? Hush. Hush. Hush for the governor. Hush for the governor. People of Boston. Good citizens of Boston. Magistrates shall take out the Preston. An inquiry shall be started this evening. Yeah! Coroner shall form an inquest. Now, school. disperse and go to your homes. The law shall take its course. We shall have a trial here in the courts of Massachusetts, where the law shall take its course. I shall live and die by thy law. Now return to your homes this evening. You go home. Patrick <laughs> Strait, take that man's name. <laughs> Captain Preston and the eight enlisted men went on trial for murder in the fall of 1770. Suffolk County juries accredited all but two. Private Matthew Kilroy and Private Edward Montgomery were convicted of manslaughter and branded on the thumb. Every year until the end of the Revolutionary War, Boston observed the anniversary of the massacre with a public oration. Today we commemorate it with this reenactment, showing the conflict from many sides. Please join us now in a moment of silence for the men and boys who died here in Boston in early 1770, 250 years ago, and for the many Americans and British and people of other nations who died in the long war to come. And now let me do, introduce Nat Shidley, President and CEO of Revolutionary Spaces, our host for this evening's reenactment and commemoration. Huzzah! 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 On behalf of Revolutionary Spaces, the organization which cares for this building, which has stood here since 1713, an Old South meeting house just up the street, which has stood since 1729, as, as symbols of our nation's founding and, and the values on which this nation was founded. I thank all of you for being here, and I invite you to join me in extending our thanks to these amazing volunteers who have been with us tonight. I also want to thank our partners, Revolution 250 and Newport Historical Society for their work on this. And I particularly want to thank Newport Historical Society's History Space and Elizabeth Sulak, who was the organizer of much of what you saw tonight. Tonight we remember the 250th anniversary of the Boston Massacre and it's just the first step on a journey of exploration that we will all be on together between now and July of 2026 when in this very same place we will gather to honor the 250th anniversary of our nation's independence. six years are an incredible opportunity for us to touch our nation's founding history and think about the story that it tells us about where we come from, but also who we are today and the nation that we want to be moving forward. So please come back 
and explore with us. This entire year, Revolutionary Spaces will be mounting programming that explores the memory of the massacre and the way we've used it as a nation to change our understanding of who we are today. There will be plays and public art and community conversations and upstairs in one of the galleries here in the Old State House we have just opened an exhibition called Reflecting Addicts which explores our changing memory of Christmas Addicts, the first to die on the night of March 5th, 1770. This, uh, this week, on Thursday night, on March 12th at 6.30, over at Old South Meeting House, there will be a program um, exploring the massacre orations called Sanguinary Theater, an evening with Dr. Joseph Warren and his massacre orations. So please consider joining us for that as well. And thank you all very much for being here. Um, God bless.